Okay, so I was uh, challenged to create a tutorial for the CNC Router Group on Facebook uh, about taking a scan of a part and turning it into a 3D CAD model. So I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm using Solid Edge ST9. I'm using that because I was taught that at university and Siemens uh, very kindly hand out free perpetual academic licenses uh, for a version of Solid Edge. There are some limitations with that license. I can't uh, do any commercial work with that, obviously. But also the files that I create with an academic version cannot be opened in the properly licensed version. So although it is free and you can learn how to use it, you do have a few limitations there with what you can actually do in the real world. But anyway, just to show you how quick this can be, I've opened up a blank part, it's brand new, nothing here. I'm in ordered mode. Uh, which is one of the ways to, to work in Solid Edge. I'm not going to go into the differences of the different modes here. So let's just get on and make this part. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a sketch uh, on the ZX plane, which is your standard front view of your, your item. And on that sketch, I'm going to insert the photograph of the part that we're trying to make. And there we go, there we've got it on the screen. I can close that sketch. Now it's important to note that the quality of your results when you're doing this depends entirely on the quality of the picture you're working from. I think this picture has just been taken on a camera phone or something like that, so it's not quite uh, perpendicular to the camera, so the lines might be a bit out, the circles aren't exactly circular, that sort of thing. The best, best way to do this is to put your part onto a flatbed scanner and scan it in directly at the highest resolution that you can. But we'll just work with what we've got here and we'll do a quick approximation. So I'm going to create an extrude part. And I'm going to do that on the same plane that I put the picture, so the ZX plane. And I'm just going to go around with these, uh, with the line tool and draw the, the straight lines. Now, I'm going to extend the lines past the point where I actually need them, and I could obviously be doing this a bit more neatly, but just for the sake of, of argument, let's just do it roughly. Now this part that I'm trying to do here, I, I've no idea what it's for, I've no idea what kind of material it should be made from, I've no idea if it was designed using metric or imperial measurements, uh, I work in metric because they're sensible. And if I actually had the part in front of me, I would be getting my calipers out and taking some some measurements from it to ensure I'm getting the the best possible result. Now, I'm going to use the extends tool just to bring that line across to the next one and I'll show you in a minute why I've actually gone beyond the intersection with my lines there. There's four holes on this part. I've no idea what size they're meant to be but obviously I could measure that if I had the part in front of me. So I'm just going to with the circle tool, draw across that and give me a circle that's the approximate size. Now if I measure that with the dimension tool, that's coming out at 23.78 mil. And I'm just going to make that 23 because that looks a bit closer and just move it a little bit so that it, it lines up a bit better with the, the picture. Okay, I'm going to assume that the other holes are the same size, so I can just pre-dimension that as 23mm and just place them where I think they should be. And you can see here this hole on the picture is, is well off being actually circular. I don't know if that's because it it should be an oval hole or whether it's just 
because of how the picture has been taken. I'm not going to worry too much because I'm never going to use this part, it's just to show you how I would do it. For these kind of bits around here, they're kind of bossed around the side, I'm assuming that that, that line out here should be a, a constant distance from the, the bolt hole to provide a, a constant amount of material from the edge. So you can see when I when I do that and put a second concentric circle around the, the images come in, in a lot sooner than what I think. Again, I'm not going to worry too much about that because it's just for demonstration. I could spend a little bit longer doing a an arc by three points with the start and end and then really it match up, but just for the purposes of, of this video I don't think it's, it's worth my while to do that. Right, so now I've got uh, the basic outline there. I can trim off these extra bits with the trim tool. And this is why I went a bit further with those lines, just so that when I trim them back they'll be trimmed to where they intersect. And that gives me a much nicer thing to work with than, than trying to line them up exactly on the spot every time. Okay, so finally we need to add in the fillets on the corners. You notice know, the corners on the photograph are, are all nicely curved. And that's super, super easy to do. We just grab the fillet tool, click the corner, and move it in until it matches the picture underneath. And I see I've not been terribly good there with that line, but you get the idea. I'm not putting too much care into this because it's not my part. Okay, so that's the shape defined. Um, I've not given it any dimensions yet. That's a really important stage of doing a CAD model is making your dimensions and your relationships correct. But there's plenty of videos on YouTube you can look at for that. So I'm going to try and close this sketch. Hopefully it'll work, but there might be some errors. And yet there's an error coming up. So it says the profile intersects itself and it's highlighted over here, this line. But there's a problem, so if I zoom in on this line here, you can see the highlighted orange line extends out into space there. So hopefully can't create a solid part with with a bit of line sticking out. So I just come off that, take my trim tool and trim it back to the, the intersect point. And I think that should be it, so we'll try closing again. Yeah, it's happy with that now. Now I need to tell it how thick this piece should be. I've no idea what the original part is, but just for the sake of argument, I'll say it's 10 mil thick. And then finish, and we'll just leave it called Extrude Protrusion 1. Now, if I just hide Sketch 1, which was our photo, you can see that I've now got a 3D model that's a pretty close match to the original picture. I could obviously make it a lot closer by taking measurements off the part. I can do whatever I want with that now. I can save it as a flat file as a DXF by using Solid Edge's sheet metal mode, or I can export an STL, I can 3D print, I can put it onto my laser cutter, or onto my CNC router. Simple as that. Complicated things can be drafted up really quickly if you can scan the part. Okay, thanks for watching.